Good afternoon. My name is Lauren Lambert. I am the attorney here at Arrow Legal Solutions. I need to provide you information regarding how to be a witness during a deposition. Now, the purpose of a deposition is threefold. The first is to find out what you know about your case. If you are a witness, it's to determine what you know about someone else's cases that you have information that may be relevant about. The next purpose is to lock down your testimony. And what that means is the opposing counsel, or sometimes your own attorney, wants to create a record about what you know and that that record will bind you to that testimony if that testimony is used in further motions in the case and used in a manner that's adverse to your claims. The other thing that a deposition is for is to preserve your testimony. In my career, I have had a few clients and several witnesses that become deceased during the course of the litigation. If we have taken a deposition, then we have their testimony under oath that the opposing counsel was present for and could object and also ask their questions. And then that testimony can be used in the trial in some circumstances. Be aware that while a case is not usually won by a particular deposition, it can be lost by what you say in your deposition. So it's important that you take to heart what I have to say and you actually do the things that I'm in instructing you to do. Now of course if I am not your attorney you just need to follow these rules and if you do have an attorney you need to follow the instructions that that particular attorney gives you. Now it's important that you have the proper attitude during your deposition. Most attorneys have the style of making you think that you are their best friend. Now there are other attorneys that have a very different style and it's more rare, but sometimes they will purposely try to agitate you. What you need to understand is that the opposing counsel is not your friend, nor can you treat your opposing counsel like your adversary when in fact he or she is. An opposing counsel will use anything they can against you and will even ask the questions in a manner to confuse you or to cause you to say things out of context that can be used later. So if the attorney tells you that they are not trying to trick you, trick you, certainly they most attorneys have decorum in that they're not going to say things that are on their face objectionable. But the reality is that if they can trick you, and they can ask you questions in a way that confuses you so that you give answers that they can use against you, they will do so. Usually you run into problems with this type of an issue when you think that attorney is your friend. Again, the attorney is not your friend. The attorney will try to get you just to be blabbering and trying to be helpful and thereby you may say things that you don't think through. Or the attorney may purposely try to agitate you so you again say things that you don't think through. The bottom line here is the attorney is not your friend, nor is he or she your enemy, so you are to answer questions professionally, with respect, and no more. Don't engage the opposing counsel in a conversation. Don't start talking about things that have nothing to do with the question that has been given to you. If you're unrepresented at a deposition, don't enter into some sort of friendly chat with the opposing counsel. And if the opposing counsel agitates you and purposely says things to get you angry, maintain your calm and don't become angry. The next important thing is to, of course, tell the truth. In telling the truth, you need to make sure that you give complete answers. If you are asked a question that you are uncomfortable with, that you think you should not have to provide an answer, and you are represented, 
you should ask for a break and indicate that you want to explore whether or not you have a privilege not to answer the question. Now your attorney may know right away whether or not you should answer the question and if you're instructed to go ahead and answer the question, you should. If there is any information that you know that you think could be used to embarrass you or make you look bad, either your claim look bad or make you look like a person that is not credible or a person that cannot be believed, make sure you discuss that with your attorney before the deposition and then your attorney can explain whether or not that information has to be divulged. The fact of the matter is, is often most information that makes people uncomfortable or that they should not, they think they should not have to provide is information that can't be used in your case and can't be used against you. But the minute that you lie about something, then that lie may be able to be used just to show that you are not a credible person. So make sure you discuss any concerns that you have with your attorney regarding any information in your background that you think could be used against you or any information about your particular claim that would lead you to believe that you have some weak aspects of your claim that you haven't discussed with your attorney. Do not volunteer information. Again, what this means is that you don't start getting chatty with the opposing counsel. You don't think, oh, well, I know where this case is going, or I know where this questioning is going, so I'll go ahead and fill in the blanks so that we can terminate the deposition as soon as possible. The reality is that when you volunteer information, you usually increase the length of the deposition because you may be reminding the opposing counsel of things that he or she has not asked or you may be opening up an area of inquiry or questioning that the opposing counsel would not have thought to ask you. So do not volunteer information. The other thing you have to know is that this is your case. Do not put upon your attorney the burden of carrying you on his back or her back throughout the litigation to make sure you win. You need to understand your claims. You need to understand how you were harmed. And you need to be able to express the, your claim and the manner in which you were harmed. You also need to understand the weaknesses of your case. If you do not, make sure you read all of your medical records. If, this, if it's a case that involves medical information, you read the pleadings, you read the answer, you read all the information that you've been given on your case to make sure that you are as prepared as possible. Now in stating that, if you are asked during your deposition if you read anything to prepare for your case, that is not a tricky question. It is perfectly legal for you to prepare for your deposition. So don't think that you have to be untruthful about the information you have read to prepare for your case. You simply indicate to the opposing counsel what you did to prepare. It's not a secret. I've had clients think that there's something that they shouldn't have been doing because the question is asked in a way that psychologically is meant to put them on the spot. Don't be put on the spot. It's perfectly fine that you prepared for your deposition. The next thing is you need, and, and this advice is somewhat tricky because on the one hand your answers should be brief but on the other hand your answers should be complete. Listen to the question, think about what you're going to say, answer just the question again put to you by keeping your explanation brief but don't think that when an, an attorney or I tells you to give a, a response that is relatively brief, that doesn't mean you don't answer the entire question. Don't come across as being obstreperous or being uncooperative in answering the questions. Answer the complete question that you have been asked. Now, you need to make sure that your answers are accurate. If you are asked a question that is a yes or no question and you feel like that you cannot answer it yes or no, 
indicate that in your response. Say, you know, I really can't answer this yes or no, and I'd like to explain why, but if you're forcing me to answer, then it would be no or yes, or whatever the case may be. But make sure that the opposing counsel understands that you don't feel you can answer it in that fashion. Therefore, they often have to give you that opportunity or your attorney is apprised of that fact and your attorney can then follow up when he or she is allowed to ask questions. Do not speculate or guess when you're asked a question. Attorneys that have an aggressive style may give you the impression that if you don't have an answer there is something wrong with you or that your case will fail. It is perfectly fine to say at times, I don't remember and I don't know. And make sure that you understand the difference. If you are asked what you had for breakfast a year ago, if you know that you generally eat breakfast, you probably will have to say, well, I can't remember. If you are asked what the President of the United States had for breakfast yesterday, it's probably, I don't know. There is a difference and it's important that you understand that and you answer the question appropriately. Of course, if you don't remember key facts about your case, again, that can be used against you. So when I'm saying that the deposition is not a memory contest, that's not to say that you don't need to take the time necessary to remind yourself of the facts that are important in your case that you know or should know. On the other hand, don't think you have to have an answer for everything. If you're asked some obscure question about a pleading that your attorney drafted and filed, and you're not the one that wrote it, you don't know the information, say you uh, don't know. If you're asked a question that has a legal phrase or a legal term that you don't understand, ask for a definition. If you still don't understand, you may need to answer, I don't know. But make sure that you finish any question that you are asked. If the opposing counsel cuts you off and doesn't allow you to answer a question, or as you go along in your deposition, you realize that you have not given a complete answer, make sure that you tell the attorney, well, I haven't had an opportunity to complete one of my answers or I didn't complete the answer I was just given I need to do that again the attorney will most likely allow you to do so or your attorney can make a follow-up question to make sure that you give a complete answer do not endure any personal discomfort during the deposition if you have any kind of an illness or an injury that needs to be accommodated so indicate if you need to take a break to go to the restroom you can ask for that break you don't have to give an explanation just indicate I want a break and I want to take it now now make sure you finish the question that has been posed to you but then ask for the break I'll tell you the circumstance in which you can refuse to answer a question in just one moment but again if you need a bathroom break, if you need a break to stretch your legs, if you have to stand because your back is hurting, if you even have to take time to lay down, or if you become so emotionally distraught that you need a break, take a break. Also, during a deposition, your attorney may make objections, or the opposing counsel may make objection if your attorney is doing the questioning make sure you listen to those objections now a, an objection cannot be used to influence you or cause you to do something in your testimony that is untruthful and there is not a judge to rule upon those objections but an objection may be made that would indicate that the question is somewhat confusing ambiguous or what we call a duplicate or a, a question that is compound that has several questions within it. If that kind of an objection is made, it may alert you to the fact that the question is problematic. If you yourself also think that that question is such that you do not understand it or it is hard to give a response, you can certainly ask the opposing counsel to rephrase the question or again give a definition to 
a phrase or a word that you did not understand. Be aware of the attorney-client privilege. The opposing counsel does not have a right to discuss with you anything that you have discussed with your attorney, nor does that opposing counsel have the right to ask you how you came to hire or retain your attorney. There are very limited circumstances in which that question can be asked, and I as an attorney, it is my policy that I do not allow opposing counsels to ask not only about questions or information that we have discussed together, but to inquire about how it is that you came to hire me. The reasons that attorneys ask those kind of questions is to try to get a jury or a judge to speculate about things they have no business speculating about because it intrudes upon the attorney-client privilege and forces the attorney to become a witness. The opposing counsel doesn't have a right to do that. So don't discuss with the opposing counsel your relationship with your attorney, how you retained your attorney, or the discussions that you have had with your attorney. If there is an aspect about that that your attorney believes they do have a right to ask, then your attorney or I will tell you to go ahead and give that information. Along those lines, if you're ever asked to give your social security number, I do not allow opposing counsels to ask that question either. I further do not allow opposing counsels to ask my client generally about my client's criminal record if it concerns arrests or things that did not result in a conviction nor do I allow them to ask of any types of convictions other than felonies and convictions that concern certain types of charges that indicate that somebody is dishonest. Otherwise, I instruct my client not to answer those questions. Excuse me. If you are instructed by your attorney not to answer a question, make sure that you don't do that. Sometimes I get opposing counsels trying to get in a dialogue with my client to make my client think that what I have told them is incorrect and that bad things are going to happen if they don't answer. Don't get into that kind of a give and take with the opposing counsel. Just indicate to the opposing counsel that your attorney has told you not to answer and you're not going to do so. Make sure you answer all questions out loud. Don't shake your head any way, yes or no. Don't say uh-huh, uh-uh. Give complete yes or no responses and answers that are out loud. Also, if you are asked a listing question, make sure at the end of the listing question you say something like this, that is all I can remember at this time, or that exhausts my memory at this time. Perhaps if I saw documents or other things, or I had a little more time, I might remember there are other things. A listing question is a question which asks you to draw upon your memory and give them a bunch of examples of what is contained in that list. They are like, tell me everything you remember saying on a particular occasion or everything you remember being said to you. That is a listing question. Answer as well as you can, and at the end of saying, your response say, and that's all I can remember at this time. A listing question, I'll give you an example of that, kind of an absurd example. Let's say you were asked to name all the different makes of cars that you had driven up to the date of your deposition. Well, most of us that are adult, adults have driven lots of cars, and we not, may not remember everything. So at the end of your list of all the different cars you have driven, you would say something to the effect of, that's all I can remember at this time. There may be others. The reason you do that is if that was actually important in your case to know what cars you had driven, the opposing counsel couldn't in trial say, well, remember I asked you to list all the cars and remember that you listed these five different cars? Well, here is a photo of you driving a different car that you didn't testify about in your deposition. Now, this is kind of an absurd example, but that makes you look like a liar. Where this usually comes up when 
people are asked to draw upon their memory about their prior medical history or what their medical records say. Lots of people, contrary to popular belief, do not remember a lot of the accidents and injuries they've had in their life. They only remember the significant ones. Now, along those lines, if your case involves a medical issue, you need to read your medical records and be aware of what is in them so that you can accurately state what has happened in your medical history. Make sure you stay awake and engaged in your deposition. If you become tired and need a break, again, ask for a break. Get up and stretch your legs. Take a walk up and down the stairs, but stay engaged. Do not be clever, sarcastic, or humorous. It is the rare person that in a deposition they can use humor or sarcasm or be clever and have that help their case. A lot of times that hurts your case. Do not laugh or get cute with the opposing uh, counsel or again become angry with them. Be professional, listen, answer the questions, no more and no less. Do not overspeak. Wait for the opposing counsel to finish their question. Think about what you're going to say and then give your answer. Do not cut off the opposing counsel or overspeak. Do not be in a hurry to answer, as I said. Make sure you understand the question. Don't think out loud. Formulate the response in your mind and then give the response. Insist on finishing, as I already said, and wear appropriate attire and maintain, again, your composure during the deposition. Appropriate attire is conservative, inexpensive, simple clothing. Do not wear any expensive jewelry, any expensive shoes. If you're a female, don't get your nails done up. Don't wear a lot of makeup, a lot of jewelry, or have a hairdo. Now, there may be times where you should dress up for a deposition or you should underdress for a deposition. Discuss that with your attorney. Very rarely will I tell a client to do either. What we want to do is present an image that does not detract from your message. What is important is what you have to say, not what you look like. And in certain kinds of cases, opposing counsels, insurance representatives, and other individuals will hold it against you when you wear certain attire. Make sure your uh, attire is laundered and ironed when necessary, and take appropriate hygiene measure measures before coming to your deposition. Now, if you have any questions beyond this, I will be happy to answer them. We will also give you a complete summary, actually not a summary, but a little bit in more detail, a document that you can read on your own about your particular deposition. Thank you.